What do Washington State biologist Gary Kohler and middle school teacher Trish Griswold have in common? The answer is Project CAT, an innovative cougar research program in which students in Clay Ellum, Washington, work side by side with scientists in the field. Clay Ellum is nestled in the foothills of the Cascade Mountains and covered in snow in winter. Development is rapidly transforming this former mining and lumber town into a bedroom community of Seattle. In the ridges surrounding the town are deer, elk, and cougars. As more people move in, chances of cougar and human interactions increase. Understanding cougar behavior and alleviating fear of the wildcats is what brought scientists together with the students in Clay Ellum. It started out with just a uh, wildlife biologist that would let students come along with them and shadow, and it was a few at a time, and it was a new thing for them. In fact, I ask scientists now if they take kids out, and they really have to think about if they could handle it. Um, so that was, you know, bra blazing new trail. Has Project Cat influenced? Clay Allen's K through 12 teachers integrated Project Cat into the classroom, but outside the classroom, students yeah. experienced and the cougar up close. That, when the cat um, was lowered to the ground, of course, everybody had a chance to touch it because it's nothing like that. You get your, um, I guess, you just get just overwhelmed and they are very very beautiful animals and you know something that you can get your arms around so it wasn't sort of a mystery animal but at that point they they would start taking measurements everybody would be assigned a position and they would measure it from nose to tail they would measure uh, girth sometimes they would lift it and weigh it if they could some of the cats were too large and then they would check the teeth whether ear-tagging kittens in summer or radio-collaring adult cougars in winter, the students were transformed by their experiences, becoming ambassadors for the cougar. Well, when the kids come in from the uh, great outdoors and they've been on a capture, they know that they're part of a very large ecosystem. And they have a lot of respect for their place in it. And they realize that it's just not something in a book that they see or in a movie, that it's actually an animal that that is going through their yard possibly, or our schoolyard, which we know that they do. When that happens, they become more um, responsible. They say, now how can we help keep the interactions down? In addition to the first-hand experiences gained by the students, the radio callers they help put on the Cougars provide important data for Gary Kohler's research. Since 2000, we've marked over 40 cats in this area with GPS callers and VHF callers. And uh, we have radio receivers here that, uh, that I've attached to an antenna on the roof that I can drive through town trolling for cougars or the marked cats that we've had marked over the years. And um, so I can come right into town here and we can find cougars that uh, are right, living right on the edge of town. But even with the help of technology, cougars are extremely hard to find, underscoring why cougar sightings are so rare. So we're not picking any signals up from any of the marked cats here uh, on the neighborhood of town. So let's uh, get back into the truck and drive out into uh, some of the neighboring areas where we know where they live. This ridge right in front of us, over the years, we've captured a couple cats uh, right off right on the edge of the ridge there. And we're just gonna enter this de development area right now. And over the years, we've got a cat up here on the ridge, we've got a cat over here by the river. Uh, so, prime cougar habitat, prime deer and elk habitat. What we're doing now is we're trolling for cougars that might be in the neighborhood with the, uh, for the frequencies various frequencies of the marked cats. Gary's search for the radio collared cat takes him from residential construction sites, along dirt roads, through the woods, out onto a golf course, and back into the woods again. We're picking up a signal from this cat. It seems to be getting a little stronger. It has led us on a couple blind alleys, but I think hopefully, yeah, I think we're getting closer to it. I think I've said that before. The search for Comet, the name given this particular male cougar by the students, brings Gary to a reservoir just outside of town. This is just really deceiving. I can't figure out if it's led us on this chase 
It's very possible it's maybe high in a ridge. The elusive cougar. Even when you have a GPS collar and a VHF collar on it, they're hard to understand. Well, one last prediction. Maybe he's high on the ridge over here. I don't think we're going to get there today, though. Though doubtful about his prospects for locating Comet, Gary makes one more attempt. Yeah, I think we're starting to home in on him. Minutes later, and Gary has jumped out of the truck again. So this cat is right there. He's got to be within a quarter of a mile, maybe, maybe even less. So I'm going to turn our UHF receiver on and see if we can get a download of the GPS data from this cat. Receive GPS data with channel info. Request for GPS data. All data are saved. We were successful. So we can see where Comet's been for the last several weeks. The data captured through the partnership between Kohler and the students is key to helping Clay Ellum understand the cougar and ultimately how to be its neighbor. I think that uh, typically us as scientists, as researchers, uh, often think that, well, we can't, uh, we got to kind of protect ourselves from, from the community. Uh, but I think that it's also our duty, our, um, it's a demand from us, is that we share this information not only with colleagues in the scientific world, but with the community, because that's where this information is going to be used. So working with the community is important. Working with kids, they're the best ambassadors to get this information into the community. And I think that that's Project CAT has demonstrated that.